other different types of dementia and depending upon where the difficulties lie that in the illness determines the course of treatment. Yes, you can. All you have to do is want to do it. Yes. Want to be it. Okay. Can you set your mind to it? And this is who you are and the grown men. We have the youth that we need to mentor and we need to inspire and we need to <laughs> motivate. But I know as a recent conversation between you and I that you're also in the business of motivating grown men. Through that, I'm supposed to just see God in it at every turn. So me going to the Sea of Galilee was to remind me of that, to refresh myself of that. It is all under control, that he does have it. It's just as clear as that fresh water that I saw. You're Our Unity, hosted by LaShawn Walker. Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. PST. Welcome, everyone, to Your Our Unity, a show that wishes to spread a spirit of peace and love in the world, one conversation at a time. We want to encourage you to stay true to yourself, stand strong in your beliefs, and hold just hold dearly your core values, and also be authentic and transparent with not only yourself, but others. Basically, what I want you to do is dare to be you. I am your host, LaShawn Walker. I'd like to welcome you in. Please like, share, and follow. Let everyone know that we're on right now. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. It has been beautiful for me. It is the 1st of August. I cannot believe that the month is already here, that the summer is just slipping by so quickly. I hope that you guys got your two fun do list done and that if you have it you better get to it I've been doing a lot of you know going out and partying and also I've been working very hard working hard for the season that is coming and um, just making sure that I have all my affairs in order you know we tend to lose our energy and our fire when the fall time comes so I want to make sure that I am prepared for the darkness that is impending but uh, let me know have you guys been out are you making sure that you're getting all that you want it done for this summer the days are getting shorter soon and also the it's getting a little cooler outside so get out and enjoy the weather and get around your family and your friends I have been surrounded by just such happy people lately and I've also been hanging around a lot of youth a lot of youth that have been inspiring me and you know lately my girl Celine has been here and we've been hanging out and talking so I didn't want to you know continue my summer without sharing more activities that I've been doing with the youth but as I mentioned put in the chat tell me what you guys have been doing what did you do last weekend did you get my message about the fashion show that was awesome because I had a great time and I want to talk to my friend, my guest today for the first part of the show, Miss Queen Celine, about actually what we did this past weekend. So I want to welcome Celine here. How are you, beautiful? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. The fashion show was amazing. I delve out into it. I don't want to tell people about everything I was doing this past couple of days, but uh, the fashion show this past Saturday was a big hit. It really, yeah. really was. So I want you guys to know that we've been promoting this for quite a, quite a few weeks right now, probably like a month or so. So if you didn't get a ticket, I am so sorry because they missed out, right? Yes. Oh, my God. So it tell me so about fun. what it was like leading up to that day. How was it for you? Well, of course, it was very busy and active, but um, we pursued, we went through it, and there was a lot of planning late nights, um, packing, mm -hmm. and health stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, it looked like it was very involved. Yeah. But I will say that it came out beautiful. We have some pictures. We had these amazing young kids come out and just strut down the runway. Um, these kids, how do you know them? And give me sort of their age ranges. Um, well, 
the age ranges are from 4 to 25, mm -hmm. but most of the models I'd say were maybe 5 or 6 to around 18 right. or 19. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I will tell you, I couldn't tell one from the next, honestly. <laughs> there were some tall little young, <laughs> young kids there, as well as some maybe short older people there, under yeah. older kids there, but it was really great. I enjoyed the event. I was an MC for part of the show, so I got to introduce the kids, and I just love seeing their smiling faces. They, they look like they really enjoyed every single moment of that. How do you enjoy putting on that show every year? Like, I know that it, it's, it's close to your heart and it means a lot, but tell me, like, what does it mean for you to put that show on every year? Well, it means a whole lot to me. It means inspiring the youth, mm -hmm. um, getting to see them walk the runway and enjoy themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And also getting to see all the happy faces in the crowd. Yeah. I'm telling you, I saw such confidence on those kids and, and even kids that don't know, you know, to me, appeared that they may be not necessarily be interested in modeling and, and you know, strutting down the runway and being in front of a large group of people because there was a lot of people there. Yeah. So it is kind of intimidating being around a bunch of strangers. But I felt that they handled themselves so, so well. And I, I also f heard and feel that it boosts their self-esteem, you know? Yeah. I had a couple of parents there tell me how, you know, they were so happy that you guys put on this type of event every year and that it's actually help their children come out of their shell. So you have to continue doing it. Yes, especially since Smear Empowerment is all about giving the youth in our community confidence and to make them want to go after their dreams and never give up. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely showed. It really, really, really showed. And what I think is so important is that they're going to use this for a very, very long time. They're gonna remember this moment for a very long time and how it actually made them feel. And the fact that you and your mom and, and the community behind you put on this extravagant show for them, you know, for them to express themselves and for them to be highlighted for a day because that's really what it was about too them being highlighted and I, I just saw all of the delight on the parents faces and all of the visitors that were there we had I believe News 12 was there you had the newspaper the Herald there tell me about that so um, I'm not sure positively when the newspapers coming out but um, actually that morning um, we were like rushing, rushing, because um, one of the moms had said that they'd heard that um, the mere empowerment was like it was a reminder on the news. Wow. So then we were rushing and rushing. To the to do thing for the day yeah. on the news. You see, this young lady is doing big things in the community. They are letting people know in Nassau and Suffolk County where her next event is happening. So they need to get on board, right? Yeah. All right, so you need to go to Miramparliament, what is it, dot org? Yeah. All right, and you need to get what involved, and you also need to be aware of next year's event. Tell us a little about what your anticipation is for that? So our anticipation is practically almost the same thing. So every year it's um, like before we would know you have meetings and all those things. So the models would get comfortable with the stage right. and know how to um, go on the stage. Right. And we also have different um, community service events like we go to Ronald McDonald House wow. and we cook for them. and. Although they're giving back to the community, they're also learning something too. Yeah, I love that. I will say, I was at the last event last year and it has gotten so big. Like there were a lot of people there. From what I understand, you kind of oversold tickets. It was standing room at one point. So you guys are growing. I so, so, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy that I was a part of it, of the event as well. Thank you for asking me to help by emceeing for part of the show.
but um, I hope to be part of it next year. Whatever yeah. you need, please call on me. And you guys, please get involved. This young lady, this young queen is doing amazing things in her community. I think you need to help support her, but also get involved so you can be part of this amazing change that she is bringing about, okay? All right, so again, as I was talking to everyone, I think we got a few pictures real quick of the the the, the crew of of uh, models that you had. Um, I want to show a picture of those. These young ladies, from what I understand, you kind of grew up with a few of them, right? Yes. Wow. Um, I believe around two of them were my Girl Scout sisters, mm -hmm. and I've known them since I was maybe about four years old. Cause wow. I think that's when I started Girl Scouts. Yeah. That's truly amazing, Celine. And then some of them were my classmates or people I know from around or like they received a flyer and wanted to participate. Right. I love that. I love it. Well, again, I, I wish you the best in everything that you pursue. And um, I just want to tell you I'm so proud. And thank you so much for including me in everything. I really do. We were just at the radio station, too, promoting um, the event. Um, and I just love that moment as well. So every little thing that I do with you, I truly enjoy. And I've been talking and, and spending so much time with the youth. And I've just been immersed in, in and just everything that they're doing. And, and I'm just so proud of them. So I want to talk today, before I let you go, um, about another young man that you actually know, Terrell yes. Lewis. I believe you honored him um, with an award, the Mira Empowerment um, Scholarship, yes. um, for all the work that he's been doing in his community, as well as in school. So we're going to be talking to him today. So I'm going to let you go. But thank you so much. I will see you back very, very soon. And you have a wonderful, wonderful evening, OK? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Queen Celine. We will see you soon, OK? So today I'm going to be talking to you about a young man who is making moves right now. He is a young man who just graduated high school. He is headed to college and I was blessed to actually get a moment in with him before he actually leaves for college. His name is Terrell Lewis from Elmont, New York. He's an 18 year old upcoming college freshman attending Mount St. Mary's College. He is a former leader and actor member of the men of Elmont. Terrell is a recent graduate of Elmont Memorial High School where he received high honors and numerous awards. He loves to cook, play basketball, and support his community. His plans for the future are to stay focused and obtain wealth. Terrell is self-motivated, so ready for the next phase of his life, and is dedicated to staying true to himself. As he evolves from a man, I'm sorry, from a boy to a young man, so please help me welcome Mr. Terrell Lewis. How, How you? are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. It's so great to have you here, especially when you're almost, you're about to leave everyone here in Long Island. How far is this college, um, Mount St. Mary's? I say about two hours away. Two That's hours not away. bad. Yeah. It's far enough for you, but close enough far to where... Far, not too far. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that we can get to you. Your parents can get to you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you um, for having me. I just appreciate you so much. I remember meeting this young man at the Men of Elmont meeting in the lab. I yeah. was invited to the lab. I don't think too many women are invited into the lab, no, no, but no. I was invited and I was immediately struck and impressed by this young man. It wasn't until later that I found out that he was actually the son of Celine's mom, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just always wanted to speak to you. I always saw you and you just just always just looked like a well, well-rounded young man who cared about his community and also was just very intelligent and just ready for <laughs> just ready for anything. Thank so you. I appreciate all that you're doing for yourself right now. I, I really that. do. Thank you. So I always ask my guests before I really dig deep to tell me a little about your background and your childhood. Like where I came from? Mm-hmm. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, uh, raised mm -hmm. in Elmont. Yeah. Um, Big community. Uh, my mom, my mom's the best. She she tells me all the time that she couldn't raise me alone. It's community that helped raise me, and I think my mom is like a big, big like piece of like my life. Uh -huh. um, she's definitely taught me a lot of things. She's taught me how to respect people, how to stay true to myself, and I've always just been a confident kid who just always done. 
done me. I've always done um, what I felt was comfortable. I never got like pressured by the kids. I always stay true to myself. Wow. So she taught you that at a very, very young age. She did. I'm thinking like when you were probably crawling, yeah. she taught you that. Because to have that kind of self-confidence, and even just a teenager, is really, really amazing. Yeah. So did you see that you maybe was different than other kids in that respect? Um, that you were so confident in yourself and that you were so self-assured? Uh, definitely. Especially in my generation where like kids could probably like go off and do other things because other kids are doing it or just doing it just because it's it's popular in the crowd. Yeah. I just do things that I feel comfortable with doing. Uh, I just simply knowing right from wrong, yeah. you know. Um, and of course, we all make mistakes. I'm not saying I'm perfect. We all make mistakes. Just learning from it and getting better each day. Yep, that's all you have to do. I love that you have that su that supportive family and just a grounded sense of self, you know, because Thanks. that is very important. I'm sure, you know, you see the world and you see the different paths that people could take and, and where they may end up. So as a young child, were you also, you know, aware of, of, of that? Not only, you know, disparities in just being in your neighborhood or being a black young young man, mm -hmm. but also, you know, what it would possibly look like as an adult. Were you aware of what how important that was and what it looked like back then? Um, as a kid, I say I say I'd I'd always try to like live in the moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was a lot of like basically as long as I stayed true to myself, as long as I did what I felt was right, I always thought I was in a comfortable position. Yeah. So it was never like something I really like dwindled on, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. I always wanted to like, if, if me, I always wanted to like stay true to myself, I always wanted to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do what other kids were doing. Oh, yeah. I wanted to, to go out there and get somewhere and start off early. And that's that. where my self-motivation came from. And then as I, as I go into high school, I joined clubs like Meta Elmont. I had big mentors in there, mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Ramos, Mr. Doherty. Uh, Pastor Curtis, everybody, Mr. A. Mm -hmm. uh, so the list yes, goes on. The list you goes have on. to. You have to shout yeah. them out because I know that they have helped mold you into this person yeah. that you are. I know you were self confident, you know, as a as a child, but I know they built that power in you now that you know that you are un unstoppable because you keep saying, "I know I could do what I want to do," and I think you're saying that because you know your core values are strong. Yeah, core and, values. Yeah, and they kind of afford it, help you fortify that right Definitely. So, so tell me a little about the, the men of Elmont um, what did you you know receive out of that program what did you learn what did you like best about it so I'll start off with saying like our core values our core values is a uh, L, L loyalty D duty R respect so S selfless service H honor I integrity and P personal courage mm -hmm. so basically those core values is basically something to lean back off of where if if we have to make a decision or even just like our core, it's what we stand for. It's what it's what we represent. Like right now I'm representing not only my family, my ma, uh, I'm representing my all my I'm representing all my mentors. So stand by those core values to make sure makes is making sure that I'm standing by them the right way. And I think it's really important to like have core values or at least even if it's just one. I think it's always great to stand by something and to have a why. Yeah. So that's why I that's why I have a why. No, I, I love that. I love yeah. that. And to have that why and actually see beyond, you know, this moment is is what I think is even more beautiful about what you're learning and what you're gaining. Because yeah. um, to instill that in you at a young age is, is basically teaching you that no matter what comes your way, that as long as you keep focused and you keep you know that fire and that why in your head, that you will always be able to accomplish it. Yeah. So I love that. So tell me in terms of you know an, a typical day in the program what do you guys start off with i was impressed with just the whole opening and the ending like tell us you know those that are not in that room but may want to learn or know how you are growing into this man within those four walls what a day typically looks like yep so um well first i want to say uh there are leaders i am one of the former leaders um it was me nicholas sylvester blessing 
um, there's there's out of five leaders, Jordan, Justin, and and a lot a lot, a lot of other leaders. So basically, what we do is we we basically have kids around young men around the school, young yeah young men around the school come to our meeting. We usually like meet up in our library, mm -hmm. and what we do is we start off by like saying our core values, right? These core values, what we stand by. We make sure that every kid in the room knows it. And after our core values, we would have discussions off of relevant topics that go around in the world that most men or even just colored colored young men aren't really comfortable talking about. So that's when we come together and we make a safe space where we can all discuss our feelings and like really open up, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. and teach something to these to these young kids. And it's a learning experience for me, even as a leader, it was a learning experience for me, learning learning how to lead, right. um, taking responsibility. And now I have to pass on the torch, right? Yeah. So now I have to build the next generation of leaders as I become one of my own. Yes, yes. And that's exactly what you're doing. I was actually at the ceremony when you had to pass, yeah, pass the, the sash. Exactly. Tell me about that moment. What did that feel like? I mean, you had to feel a sense of accomplishment, obviously. But, but how did you really feel in that moment? Because now you're looking at someone who you're not only leading, but who's younger than you and is really looking up to you for guidance and, and that type of, you know, inspiration. So how did that feel? It it felt um, bittersweet, bittersweet, um, because it's yes, I'm moving on, I'm next stages, but at the same time, like you want to make sure, like the like the kids are good, everybody is okay, and like I still think a big part of me, like of course I'm gonna come back, I'm always gonna like show up and try to help the best I can, but it's also just like letting these this new generation, these new kids like really figure it out on their own and like learn how to lead same way I did. Yeah. So it's definitely a learning experience. Yeah. Definitely a learning experience. Well, what I noticed is that you guys shared a lot and it, it could have been something just as minute as I, I, I didn't wake up on, you know, the right side of the bed and I'm just in a mood. So did you find it easy to share? I mean, girls, we're emotional. So we're always sharing our feelings, the people we know, people we shouldn't be sharing it with, people we don't know. So tell me, was it easy for you to share? Were you accustomed to, you know, just laying it all out? Honestly, no, it's, it's never easy to share feelings, especially feelings like that on certain topics. Um, it's just one of those things where we have to even, we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's one of those things where we have to, we have to assure that's a safe space. We have to make other people comfortable, mm -hmm. and honestly, it comes from us leaders sharing first, just to make other people comfortable. Yeah. Now, me personally, I I don't like sharing, but um, uh, it's just one of those things that we have to learn, and it's it's a really important thing, especially mm -hmm. when it's like, you don't want to get into a certain mindset or a certain like mental state where mm -hmm. it's unhealthy. Yeah. So it's really important to like keep your mental good. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I'm glad that even though you don't like it, you, you still will do it, especially with your mentors. I'm sure that you're utilizing them yeah. um, and their expertise as well as the fact that you can just reach out to them at any time. Um, let me ask you in terms of you know, the, the kids that you're now, you know, leaving behind, what would you like them to know about that experience and, and you know, what to expect? I would say, I would say do it your own way. Everyone leads in different ways. Everyone, everyone marches different, everyone walks different. I would say do it in your own way. Make sure you're doing it on your own accord and take a risk. Yeah. You, there's, it's very hard to get a reward without risk, yeah. you know? You have to take that chance. And the worst thing that can happen is that you fail and that's how you learn and succeed. Yeah. So that's that's my biggest advice. I love it, I love that. I know Mr. Doherty was just a great inspiration to you. I know you're gonna miss him now that you're going on to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm saying in, in high school, what did you enjoy most about high school? What I enjoy most about high school, I find it myself. Mm. Cause it's high school, like even right now the road's not over, but high school is one of those things where you really start to find yourself and like become who you are. Yeah. So definitely don't take it for granted. Um, have fun, as much fun as you want. It's never too late, that's another thing, it's never too late. Do, do what your heart desires and 
if there's something you want to do, start it up now. Yeah. It's yeah. never, never too early and, and never too late. You're right about that. I love that you said that too, because that is so true. Even like with Celine, she could have waited until she was an adult to start her business. This little 10 year old is now a community organizer. She has her own nonprofit. Like those are the things that just really, really warms my heart and lets me know, in addition to all that you're doing, that we're in for a bright future, folks. I don't know what you think, but I really do feel that with people like you and people like Celine at the helm and every, oh my God, countless teens and young adults that I've been meeting lately, there's no doubt in my mind that everything that you're speaking of will be happening for everyone. You know, just stay true to yourself, stand on your, stand in your core values and just believe in everything that you, that you, that you can achieve and you can achieve them. So I love that. So high school was you finding yourself. Yep. So you know who you are now. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I mean, I know you got still more to learn, yeah, but you know what you want, you know what you don't want, you know yep. what you like, you know what to aspire to achieve and to aspire to receive, and you know what the world looks like. So from your perspective and what the world looks like right now and knowing who you are, what do you want to give the world? I want to give the world more positivity and I want to give the world, I know this sounds like a little niche, but um, I want to give the world basically as much as I can. I want to provide back and give back as much as I can mm -hmm. um, while still doing what I love and still like, like looking out for the people that I care about. I want to make sure that everybody good, everybody in my circle good. I want to make sure that this world could really see who Terrell Lewis really is. Yeah, yeah. What is the most challenging thing that you say, see going on right now that you would kind of like to change or tackle, if you don't mind me asking? He asked that question one more time. He said, what do you see most challenging going on in the world right now that you would kind of like to change or tackle? Um, I would say the most challenging thing going on the world right now. Um, it would probably be, ooh, that's, that's a hard <laughs> question. That's a, that's a deep one. Well, you know, I mean, considering that everyone is in a divide right now, yep. such in inequality, yep. we're still dealing with, you know, violence and, and killings and police, you know, issues. So obviously we want peace. We want unity. You don't want any more wars in the world. So as a man, yeah, the challenge. <laughs> I would say... Honestly, probably acceptance, mm. you know, still accepting people for who they are, um, being open, and you don't have to rock with everybody. You know, you could, you could have your own group and this other group could do what that other group does. I think, yeah. I think it's to the point where we all respect each other and still stay humble. Yeah. You don't have to like the person, but you still respect the person. So that's definitely something that I think yeah. should you know, I love that. I love that. To be initiated. How, how easy, I mean, you know, not everyone grows up with the, the type, type of support system that you have and the community that you have. Um, if you could sum up, you know, in a way that if there's a young man out there that, you know, doesn't have it as great as you have, um, how they can still receive it, what would you suggest? So, me personally, I would say, I would say, don't go seeking for that support system. Yes, it's great to have it, but I also think it's great to have your own, like, be confident in you, you know? Be there for yourself. You know, you can't love other people before, you have to learn how to love yourself before you love other people. Yeah. So I think make sure that you're good, make sure that you can support you, mm -hmm. and then that's when everybody else is gonna start coming in, everybody else is gonna wanna come and support you. Yeah. So I think it's a lot of just you first, mm -hmm. and then other people will come. Yeah, I agree. Let me tell you, you won a lot of awards at the award ceremony yeah. at that high school, my friend. <laughs> so I'm sitting up here and I contributed to the scholarship because you, Mirror Empowerment, received the your Our Unity scholarship. So out of all of these awards, you must be doing a lot in school. So I really don't know what you do. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what is your, your, you know, your favorite subject? What do you aspire to be when you grow up? What um, are you good at? What is your talent, your hobby? Like, give us a little, tell us what you do. A by myself, a little by myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, I aspire, I, li I like playing basketball a lot. I aspire to take that as far as I can. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, I, my favorite subject would probably be, I do like math. I do really like math. 
Um, in the future, me in the future, I see me being as wealthy as possible. You know, I don't want to just be rich. I want to. I want to have all the fancy cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure I stay wealthy. And all of that. I want to make sure that my family good. Mm -hmm. That my mom's, my sister, everybody's college is paid. You know, maybe buy my mom a house. Nice. Maybe buy Miss Savage a big kitchen. Aww. <laughs> yeah. You said a big kitchen. Big you kitchen. heard that? <laughs> yeah. um, oh. You know, I want to make sure that all my people is good. Um, yeah. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I know it's gonna happen. Mm. So yeah. Do you know what your? Do you have a passion yet? Are you into music or engineering? Uh, like? Right now, my passion is basketball. It is. Yeah, so my, sports. Sports. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. So in this school that you're going to, what are you majoring in? Um, probably a major in art. In art. In art. Oh, so you're also creative. All right. I, oh yeah, as a kid, I drew a lot and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. Oh my God, see, I had no idea. I just know you, you've made a lot of money <laughs> at the award ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> like it was truly amazing. Every time I turned around, the man was up on the stage. <laughs> so I was like, he is going far. No, I'm so proud of you. And that Thank that you. is a really, really great accomplishment. Uh, you, you know, considering, you know, the paths that you could have taken, you know, the, the nights that you could have been not playing basketball, but out on the street, you know? So I, I just, love that you know who you are and that you're gonna do what you want to do no matter what others tell you. you. Um, how important do you think it is for you know young kids to have mentors? I think I think it's very important especially to have uh, a young man who doesn't exactly have a father figure in his life. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have that older that older figure to look up to and to model after. For me, my biggest one was Principal Doherty mm -hmm. and Mr. Johnson. Those are definitely my like biggest top two yeah. because they were like, even though they were kind of like po a little pull out the sense, you know, there was like a positive and like a like a little more serious tone. Yes. So like, good cop, I definitely, bad cop. yeah, good cop, <laughs> bad cop. Definitely had a little bit nice balance there, mm -hmm. and they definitely taught me how to become a respectable young man and how to like carry myself in every day, everyday life where I walk. And it's just, I, I respect them and owe them forever for that. So yeah. definitely. No, I, I think it's it's so needed for every young man out there to have, you know, a, a really good role model. And women as well, but for men especially. Because we can get caught up, men can get caught up in, in just real unnecessary nonsense. And, and only really because of the lack of support, education, and resources sometimes. You know, not having that outlet, that place to go play basketball, or a community center where you can hang out with your friends that are all like-minded. So I, I think it's very important that every young man, you know, has a mentor. Um, tell me, what would you like to leave the kids, or what impression would you like the kids of Elmont High School to remember about you, um, or leave with them? I would like, I would like them to probably remember me as the kid that never gave up, mm -hmm. that always respected everybody, that. Honestly, they probably they probably knew everybody. Probably knew everybody. Yes, you um, do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would like to be known as like the kid that always treated everybody equally. Always try to like put a smile on people's faces, mm -hmm. and always made sure that my people was good. Yeah, that's one thing that I did notice about you. You like you are well loved Thank by you. everyone, and I mean old and young. <laughs> I am so serious. Little kids love you and grown-ups love you. Thank so, you. you know, growing up, did you see yourself different? Did you, could you tell that, you know, your eyes were probably bigger than maybe your friends and that your vision and your why was probably bigger than your friends? Um, as a kid, so my mom always told me, like, as a kid, like, there was definitely, like, an evolution where, like, I, like, I guess you say woke up where, like, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm a do this. So definitely, like as a kid, um, I didn't gain that confidence till I'd say eighth grade. Oh wow! So like towards eighth grade is when I really started to like staying true to myself. As a kid, yeah, I was confident, I was determined, but like it wasn't until like real like middle school year where I was like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta do me. I gotta, I gotta work on what I want to work on, mm -hmm. and that's when like, like my mom was always near me. Like my mom was always beside me. And she was always there for me my whole life, and it's just to the point where it's like, yeah, I, I could do this. I could, I could do me. I could do.
basically anything that I put my mind to. Yeah, and nothing's gonna stop you, my friend. No, I love that. Do you have a competitive nature, a competitive spirit? Absolutely. Do you really? Absolutely. How do you deal when you lose then? <laughs> Tell me about that, because you're always smiling and happy. I don't think I've ever seen you like with a mood. So <laughs> how are you in those competitive moments or those challenging moments? What is your spirit like? Uh, in those competitive challenge moments, you know, you gotta have losses, you gotta have wins, but at the end of the day, it's just getting up the next morning and doing it all over again. Mm -hmm. And it's just accepting it. And definitely losing, I hate, of course, everyone hates losing, but I hate losing. And you just gotta keep your head up and be faithful and just hope for the best. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. What are you gonna miss most about just being this, this mentor, this leader, to all of these these young men at Men of Elmont? I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss being around them. I, I think there's still so much that I would love to like pass on to them. Mm -hmm. Still so much I would love to like teach them. I just, I just hope I, I left a good mark. I hope that everybody still like, everyone gets the main focus of everything. Right. Especially the leaders, the new leaders. Um, I'm hoping that they say true themselves, and if they need help, they still can reach out to me. Yeah. So I'm definitely hoping that everyone got what they needed. Right, I love that. Well, now you're about to be a big man on campus, my friend. How yeah. do you feel about that? Are, are you ready? Are you afraid? A little fear? Like, tell me about what you're going through right now. You literally leave, like, in a week. Yeah. So what does that feel like? Um, it feels, again, it feels bittersweet, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I think leaving for college, it's exciting and it's scary and it's a whole bunch of feelings. But I know that, like at the end of the day, like my mom's a big part of me. Mm -hmm. I know my mom got me. I'm always gonna like come back and visit. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely a, it's definitely a phase. It's definitely a, a moving experience. Yeah. Definitely. New chapter in your life. New chapter. Yeah. New chapter. New phase. Just new experiences. Ah, it just sounds so cool to me. What do you look forward to to most now that you're leaving? Like, what what is that first thing that you kind of want to like? Wow, because you're now going to be an independent. Like, you're on your own now. It I may would, not feel like it because you still got your parents probably yeah. calling you, but literally you're you're going to be your own individual, like you said. But now it's like physically that way so tell me i i would love to put my mark on the world especially in this phase of my life i would love to like put my name out there i would love to especially like show the world what i, what I could do i could i want to put my passion out there mm -hmm. i want people i guess you could say see me mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah i want to really be out there i want to do really big great things I know. And, and impact a lot of people. Yeah, and you will, you will. I what do you so. want those people, what do you want them students up at that school to know about, Terrell, <laughs> <laughs> when you walk through the door? What kind of impression do you want them to have of you? Because I know you're gonna walk in there with your confidence and you're gonna walk in there with your, you know, your nice, well put together swag. Yeah. But like, in terms of meeting you, you know, first sight of scene, like what would you want them to, to think I would want them to think that they could they could end up just like me you know they're in the same shoes as me mm -hmm. and I want them to know that even they could do it yeah. you know however far I go I want them to know that they could go probably even further if they really wanted to yeah. and of course I'm gonna go as far as I can okay. and I'm gonna try as hard as I can but um I definitely want them to see me as as it I guess you say inspiration I always want to be an inspiration to kids I always wanted to be an inspiration to everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. I always wanted to leave my mark on the world before yeah. I leave. Yeah, that's exactly what you're gonna do, is leave your mark on not just that school, but on the world. And in speaking of, you know, leaving your mark, um, ultimately, I mean, I know you're still young and I, you know, still unraveling sort of what you have that's going to be able to contribute to the change in this world. You know, you're well packaged, but what exactly is that job that I'm going to do. What do you, what do you think you want to, to pursue in the future? Where do you kind of see yourself maybe 10 years from now? 10 years from now? Um, from 10 years from now, I would see myself impacting communities probably all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, especially in like the main low poverty areas. Mm -hmm. I really want to impact as much people as I can mm -hmm. and still have like that good image. 
um, I want people to have the same opportunity that I did, mm -hmm. the same, men not same mentors, but like similar mentors that could like help them and guide them. Because yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's not their fault, it's just, it's just circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try as much as I can to fix that. Yeah, I like that. You find it very important to serve com community and to be part of community. Um, you know, growing up in Elmont and, and being surrounded by that, that's a tight knit community. And it's not like that everywhere. But I love Elmont. I really, really do. If you notice, I'm always in Elmont with every event I support. And it's only because I see that the people there really, really care about not only their community, their residents, but they also care about the people that live there, no matter what culture, what na no matter what nationality. Um, how do you how important do you feel that is? I know you mentioned earlier about people respecting each other, but how do you feel about, you know, us all just coming together and enjoying and celebrating, you know, our differences and, and embracing those things? I think, I think it's definitely very important, especially just like seeing everybody as equal because mm -hmm. we're all equal, you know. Yeah, we come from different places. We're all different people, different circumstances. But I think at the end of the day, we're all we're all really just people trying to, you know, go out with our dreams. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations. And I think it's just to the point where we all should like come together and see each other as not individuals, but individuals with similar goals. And like you can network, you could help each other. And I think we should all see each other as like. I guess friends. Yeah. No, yeah. that's exactly what we are. We yeah. should be. <laughs> we should see each other as friends. You see? <sighs> I've been saying it this whole entire time, and I don't see what's so hard, you know, to, to actually make that come about, make that happen. Um, so, you know, mental health is a big topic nowadays, and I'm sure, you know, with social media and things like that, that you are well aware of, you know, the many tragedies that, that go on when people go unchecked. Um, you know, you're going into a new environment um, it's going to be a, a different feeling you're not going to have your your core people there um, I know that you will be able to reach out to them but for those that may be struggling um, what would you suggest just as a person who has that sort of tribe behind him what would you suggest for someone who may be struggling you know being away from their family um, I would definitely say it's okay it's okay for that to happen it's normal um, I say it's not too late to find those people. Maybe you could find like friends mm -hmm. that you really stick by. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, you just gotta, like I said earlier, stay true to yourself. Yeah. And then you'll find those people as those people will come along. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want it, it'll, it'll come eventually. It'll come, yeah. It'll eventually come. You're right, yeah. you're right. Tell me a little about your, your take on social media. You social know? media? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like social media, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I use it. Uh, I don't have anything against social media. Again, it's one of those things where, like, you just got to use it in the right way. Right. Um, you have to be very careful what you put on there. There's different things and cultures mm -hmm. and different different um, opinions on it. You just got to be careful with that. Yeah. Um, I think it's just being responsible, being yeah. responsible with that. Everything in moderation, right? Yep. Yeah, no, Definitely. I, I totally agree with that. So the best thing about you going to college is you just living out your dreams and you stepping into this new role. As I mentioned, the title of the show was Boys to Men. Do you feel that actually happening? Are you experiencing sort of this new phase within yourself now that the days are dwindling and you're about to leave? Are you feeling that pressure? Definitely, I uh, I definitely am. It's one of those things where it's like, it's like a wake up call, you know? You have to really like put your foot down and you have to like, like get serious about life and your dreams and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely that phase where I'm in. Yeah, no, that's good. Is it easy for you to kind of maintain this positivity that you have? <laughs> um, Everything's gonna be okay. You all you have to do is just stand true to yourself. No, it's hard. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little story. So the other day, I was at the store standing online and this young woman came up to me and she was like, excuse me, I have a question to ask you. So she gives me the scenario. Apparently she held the door for this gentleman and he slipped through the door and he didn't touch the door 
door and and he didn't say thank you he just kind of moved through so she wanted to get my take on you know like how I would have responded to that situation. So I listened to it a couple of times to kind of get the gist of it. And then, you know, I just explained that I would have just said, you know, you welcome, you know, I wouldn't have been conf confrontational or whatever the case may be, but I would have just said, you know, you welcome and kept it moving. However, with her, she was kind of conflicted on how she should respond. And only because, you know, even though she's wanted to remain true to herself and just, you know, brush it off, it's not a big deal. I held the door for him, you know, and I chose to do that. But it was the extra step, the fact that he didn't respond to her kindness in the way that she wanted. So sometimes that's frustrating for people, you know? Yeah. And so therefore, yeah, you get a little annoyed, you get upset, you're not gonna have this positive, at, you know, attitude all the time. Though I did did tell her that I was like look I'm a ray of sunshine every single day I would have just said look man I held the door for you it's no big deal but there are those moments that you kind of get pulled into this you know person that you're not you know tell me how that is have you ever experienced that and um, how do you come out of it how do you kind of move past it for me um, I don't honestly I just don't do all of those things I think it's one of those things where it's like People don't even mean it sometimes. I, I just try to be as understanding as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not even trying to be arrogant. It's just like one of those things where it's like, you know, people, people could be having a bad day. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, it happens and yeah. that's all it really is. I love, I love that. <laughs> you see, they're learning this young. Cause seriously, you can, there's a multiple things that happen multitude of things that happen throughout the day that could just take you, you know, off your game, um, in an attitude, put you in a mood, um, have you acting outside of your character, you know? And to think that you still remain grounded, you know, and you stay positive and you don't look at everything as a negative, I think is very important. And I think that's very important also to teach the youth, you know? Definitely. So knowing that you are a, a community member and that you participate in a lot of community activities, um, do you see yourself being, you know, very involved in community, even as an adult, maybe even owning or having an organization of your own, because you have been brought up in giving back and serving. So what do you think about that? Just an idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely, I definitely see myself, you know, involved in my community. Mm -hmm. I don't really see me, you know, having like a big old like community company or anything like mm -hmm. that, but I don't really, like yeah, with my name out there, but like it's I don't want to be like one of those politicians or anything. Yeah. I just want to like make an impact. You know, that's all I really want. I don't care if my name is said. I just want to make an impact. Yeah. That's really all it is. No, I love that. Now you got a lot of friends back home, my friend, that <laughs> you're you. leaving. You, do you have any friends that are actually going to school with you? No, I'm not the only one. Don't. Yeah, I'm not the only oh one. Oh my God, they're all gonna miss you. <laughs> How do you feel about that? You're gonna um, be missing not only just your community, your mom, and and your family, but you have a lot of friends that I can tell that are really like your close friends that you've probably known since you were four or five years old. Definitely. So. How are you going to feel about leaving them? But more importantly, do you feel that you're going to maintain those friendships through throughout the years? I think I think I'll definitely maintain those friendships. I think um, yeah, I miss my friends. Friends are cool, you know, they're dope. Um, especially my friends, I was lucky to have a good a good group of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see why not, but it's just one of those things where like I'm gonna make new friends, and I, I'm I'm gonna keep my old friends, of course. I'm yeah. just growing friends yeah. and um, making connections, networking, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'll always pick up the phone. I love that. That's right. He's always available. And again, <laughs> you're only two hours away, so yeah. I'm sure you're gonna be driving. To, are you able to have a car the first year or not? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I was wondering because yeah. he would be up and down that highway. <laughs> I am sure. Now, what is you know what you're looking to get out of you know college? What is that that one thing that you want to get out of that experience that's gonna help you in your future? That one thing I want to get out of college, I want to, I want to, I guess that my, like my foundation, mm -hmm. I want to really like have like a, something to lean back off of and something to also get me going, yeah. you know, um, 
I am a put my eggs in, all my eggs in one basket guy. I am that type of person because I don't see a point of having a big dream that especially a lot of people would want without putting all your eggs in one basket. You know, I think if you really want something, you you have no choice but to put all your eggs in one basket. So it's definitely one of those things where it's like, you know, I uh, I just gotta put all my eggs in that basket and hope for the best. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's it it. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it will happen if you put all your eggs in one basket, but I just find that to be fascinating that you have that sort of mantra. Um, why? Why do you feel that you need to put all your eggs? I mean, I get you're going to grind hard, and if you don't put all your eggs in one basket, you're, you're not going to put all of the effort, I guess, into accomplishing that goal. Yeah. But, I mean, if you are talented and creative in multiple things, then you don't think you should kind of hone and put an egg or two in the one <laughs> in like five baskets? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm old, you know, yeah. so maybe it's just me, but what do you think? Um, I see, I uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said put all your eggs in one basket. I love that, yeah, I love my that. Yeah, mom, my mom doesn't like that idea, but um, it's definitely something that I live by because it's just, I want it really bad and it's just one of those things where I have to get it done. Well, I need you to consider this, and I'm, I'm not trying to be the Debbie Downer, <laughs> but I need you to consider this. Just a thought, because, you know, I'm LaShawn, and I got to share my opinions on everything, but something to fall back on. I get putting all your eggs in one basket, but do you, are you sort of nurturing something that you can fall back on? You're oh, an yeah, athlete, yeah. so I could see you being this big professional basketball, um, basketball player, but God forbid, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Absolutely, I get that. I get that. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely, that's that's where the education comes in. Okay. That's definitely what my also my principal used to preach, uh, Mr. Doherty, about like having like a like something to still fall back off of, mm -hmm. like a. That's where your education comes in. So that's where my education would definitely come in. Okay. Yeah, all definitely. Right. I see that. But you're right now, you're just focusing on that one thing and you're putting yep. all the work into that. I love that. How How is your days right now? I mean, I know you're enjoying the summer. You're trying to get to meet everybody and hang out with as many people as you possibly can. Are you enjoying the summer right now? I am enjoying my summer, mm -hmm. you know, still hanging out with friends. Uh, you know, I'm one of the, I leave early, mm -hmm. so, like, I want to get to, like, say bye to as many people as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that so, yeah. is so cool. I love it. Thank you. Well, Terrell, what do you want to tell us? Like, what would you like to share with us? I've asked a million questions. You tell me, what would you like us to know about Terrell, or what would you like to share, or what kind of advice would you like to give? The advice I'd like to give out would be, like I said, um, stay true to yourself. Uh, be you, don't change for anybody, and make sure that you learn to love yourself before you love other people. And there's always going to be people there for you, and if not, make sure you, you stay true to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Good That's, things will come. Yep, they definitely will. You've been doing some really, really great things. I am so, so, so proud of you. Thank you. I cannot wait to see all that you accomplish. And I know that you're going to accomplish a lot, my friend. I Thank really, you. really do. And the fact that you received all of those awards, it is clear to me that you can kind of go down a few paths and put some eggs in a few <laughs> baskets. I'm just saying, no pressure. You don't have to listen to me. But I'm just saying, just in case, just make sure that as you are moving in this new journey that you do take time to stop and notice the things that you are actually really really good at and just take time also to nurture those little things that you know don't not always basketball you also are good at art you're very creative you know nurture that as that skill as well like all these little things that you're good at don't just let them lay on their laurels do out do them every day or every other day just to keep your you know I'm mind going. That's right. That's all I'm saying. All right. Thank you so much, Terrell, <laughs> for being here. You are no amazing. Problem. I'm going to miss you, but I'm going to see you again. And um, you're going to come back again because we need to know what has happened since you were last here, you know, gotcha. and, and what your journey is like and what you've accomplished thus far and what you've learned because I know you're going to learn a lot more, you know, you. and share it with your community. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to get real quick to the Dare to Be You. And the Dare to Be You actually is for you. And every young man out there that is moving forward on an 
on a next on an, on to the next journey and the next phase in their life. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you be that you do be done in love. And that is what I hope and that is what I wish for you, my friend. Just stand strong in your beliefs. Hold on to your core values. Be authentic as possible as you can with yourself as well as others. And most importantly, dare to be you, but just stand strong in who you are, okay? You. And stay true to yourself, which you apparently are doing. <laughs> I'd like to thank you again for being here. i also like to thank Celine for coming on earlier. Um, and you guys for watching another episode of your our unity it has been a blast as always and i love introducing you you guys to the amazing youth that is blessing this world right now i want you guys to have a wonderful week next week we will have jacqueline kiernan on and we will be talking about all things health for the new season coming in i want you to have a wonderful evening please remember that i love you and that peace and love is in the palm of our hands so let's go out there and give some love be some love and share some love because as you know unity cannot exist without you you have a wonderful night we will see you later thank you again big man on campus say good night hey. Terrell we will see you later good night. Strong Island Entertainment.